Shalom, Pastor Hawk, coming back at you with this truth, giving all praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And I'm going to entitle this, Satan, or Satan's nukes would wipe out the East Coast. And this is from an article, Daily Star. And it says here, I'll read the headline, it says, Vladimir Putin, Putin's Satan nukes will wipe out the East Coast on the dawn of World War III, which we know is uh, the War of Armageddon. Anyway, it says Russia's nuclear arsenal could completely decimate the eastern seaboard of the United States of the U.S. in one fell swoop when World War III or the War of Armageddon breaks out. And I'll leave you the link to this uh, site in the uh, description box. And there's a video that goes with this link. And uh, this was uh, published uh, October 24th, 2016, so that, that's today. It says, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin's superpower sits on the largest nuke stockpile in the world, and its most powerful missile is the SS-18, better known as Satan or the Satan. You know, you think about the scripture of Matthew, the book of Matthew, the, uh, where it speaks about if Satan, you know, fights against Satan or comes against Satan, how can their kingdom stand? So you have uh, these two powers, and the, the one power is going to destroy the other power. It says Russia is believed to have 55 of the weapons in service, but experts have won as little as five could make ash out of the east coast of the U.S. It goes on to say these weapons are said to make the nuclear bombs drop on Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II look like pop guns. More than four million people would die if a Satan carrying its maximum payload would launch at central New York. Okay, I'm going to read this uh, quote from uh, Dr. Uh, Paul Craig Roberts, and I quote, it says, five or six of these Satans and the east coast of the United States, States disappears. Now it says five of them, which is 10% uh, of the 50 or 55 of these uh, SS-18s. In the book of Revelation, it speaks about the 10th part of the city fell. So you're talking about these 55 missiles, if shot on uh, the United States, would totally destroy the United States. And they mentioned five of them, or 5.5, five five Five, uh, five or six would destroy maybe about 10% of this country. Anyway, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of scriptures, but I'm going to go into one scripture. And this is uh, Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. Now, Revelation, the 16th uh, chapter. Maybe I should get it. Anyway, it speaks about Armageddon. In Revelation. See, now i got to go to these scriptures here. Okay, I'm going to go into the scriptures. And then I'm going to leave you with the... Uh, the Apocrypha.
Okay, let me go to uh, Revelation 20. And I'm going to start at the seven, seventh verse. It says, And when a thousand years were expired, Satan, Satan shall be loose out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, which is uh, uh, modern-day Russia or the former USSR, uh, Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. And this is the ba this is the battle. The battle is Armageddon, and um, I believe it, the word Armageddon comes up only one time in 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 the scriptures. Only one time. So we know that the eighth verse is referring to this uh, war or battle of Armageddon. It says uh, 8 verse again, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. And this started when, um, during the period of Christopher Columbus, uh, Queen Isabella, and King Ferdinand, uh, they got together and they unified their uh, kingdoms, which was, uh, I think it was Aragon and, uh, I forget uh, what are other kingdoms, um, but I can easily look it up. But that was in Spain. I'm, Aragon was was one, and they had took taken down uh, Granada. Uh, anyway, it says, um, and I'll put I'll put that information up, and you'll see it. You'll be able to see it. It says. Um, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the uh, four quarters of the earth. And that started during the period of the late, mid to late 1300s into the 1400s. And that's when uh, Columbus, you know, set sail to the, what they refer to as the New World. And they still use that term, a New World, New World Order. It says Gog and Magog, which are the Russians, to gather them together to battle, and they're being gathered together, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And the, and this, and by the way, this war, you know, you can go into the history of warfare, and this war will be the biggest, most horrific war to take place in the history of the planet Earth. And that's going to usher in our kingdom, the Most High's kingdom, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, which the the people on top will be the Israelites and the rest of the nations, starting with Esau, the Edomites, on down to the Ishmaelites, the Hamites, and the various other nations out there. They will be our servants, and you know. There's going to be leven, levels to uh, slavery. You know, we're not going to be as hard to those other nations uh, as we're going to be on Esau. Esau is going to get a special ass whipping for a very long time. And then he's going to be exterminated. Um, anyway, night verse, it says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints. The camp of the saints are the children of Israel and it's also talking about the land of Israel because that's our camp. Uh, the land of Israel, Jerusalem. The Middle East, so you can understand. <clears throat> and the beloved city. The beloved city is Jerusalem Yerushalayim, which means city of peace, 
And um, we are also known as the beloved city. We are also known as the New Jerusalem. When you read <clears throat> uh, Revelation, the 21st chapter, <clears throat> and it speaks about, matter of fact, let me get that. Okay, it says, Revelation 21, verse 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. We are that new heaven and new earth, the new kingdom. It's a people before it's an actual place. <clears throat> it says, For the first heaven and the first earth, which the first heaven and the first earth represents Esau's rulership. If you go to um, Second Ezra's, um, matter of fact, I'm going to go to it. So I can read it, you know, word for word. I'm going to start from the 7th verse. This is 2nd uh, Ezra uh, chapter 6, verse 7. It says, I, um, I answered and said, What will be the dividing of the times? And when will be the end of the first? We read in Revelation 21, For the first heaven and the first earth were done away. <clears throat> It says, or oh, when will be the end of the first? Now it says, first age and the beginning of it and, and the beginning of the age that followeth. So what age are we in? We're in the age of, and this Apocrypha is written a little different than your, the, the Apocrypha that you normally read out of the wording is a little bit different. But the but age represents a uh, a certain amount of time and a rulership. So we're in Esau's age or the age of the Edomites. That's that's a new one. The age of the Edomites, the age of Esau. It says a verse. He said to me, from Abraham to Isaac, because from him were born Jacob and Esau. And uh, Jacob and Esau are the two most important peoples or nations in the history of the world. At the end of the uh, at the end of the day, it's all about Jacob and Esau. It goes on to say, "For Jacob's hand held Esau's heel from the beginning," and that represents that ultimately you will be brought down. Now Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the beginning of the age that followeth. So now let's go back to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation 21, and let's read that again. Now we have a better understanding. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth earth, were uh, passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the, the holy city, which are the children of Israel, New Jerusalem, which are the children of Israel, coming down from the most high out of heaven. Why will we be coming down from the most? And by the way, these... Uh, Israelites are the elect of Israel, not all of Israel, because the majority of, of Israelites that are on the, so, the soil of America will be destroyed. So we will go down and have uh, children and, and uh, replenish 
the uh, earth with our, with our children. <clears throat> and it says, um, a second verse again, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high of the heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. <clears throat> now you can read uh, Matthew 25, where it speaks about the uh, ten virgins, five were wise <clears throat> and five were foolish. And uh, the ones that make it would would be the uh, the wise ones, which represent a certain segment of the children of Israel. The ones that don't make it, they are the foolish ones, which rep which are represented as the uh, two thirds of Israel that will perish here in um, Babylon the Great. It says the third verse, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold. The tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And 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 those and they shall be his people, meaning the Israelites, not the other nations. And the Most High himself shall be with them, or, or I'll read the word word for word, and God himself shall be with them and be their power. Fourth verse. And, and the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, Israelites' eyes. They ain't gonna, he's not going to wipe the tears of Esau's eyes. And there shall be no more death. So we're not going to die. It tells you in 1 Corinthians 15, O death, where is thy victory? O, o death, where is thy... The, the sting of death. It speaks about the sting of death. O death, where is thy victory? It says neither, neither. Now, now, why are we going to die? Because we're going to keep the laws perfectly, and we're going to be the priests, the men of Israel. We're going to be the priests to govern all the other nations because they're going to be sinning, and when they sin, we're going to beat. We're going to beat them now. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So this is talking about the hell that we caught over here in, in, in Babylon and the previous captivities that we were forced into. So now let me go. You know what? Let me get a better version of this Apocrypha. This is uh, Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. And put this in my favorites. And for you idiots out there that spend thousands of dollars on uh, books, you know, you can find pretty much any book online. Okay, this is uh, Second Ezra 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 1. It says, and this is, um, this basically goes straight in on uh, the war of Armageddon the uh, coming destruction and, and before that the um, chip you know they 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 eventually what they're going to do is um, you know force the whole world to uh, accept that uh, microchip the uh, mark of the beast and uh you know, you're going to be tested as to whether you're going to take it or not. If the Most High puts the Spirit on you to um, resist it, you will resist it. But uh, the majority of our people will take that chip. And before this destruction takes place, the war of Armageddon, when Babylon the Great is utterly destroyed, as, as spoken of in Isaiah 13 and Isaiah the 14th chapter and, and uh, Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51. I mean, there's, there's many scriptures, you know, on the uh, destruction or the war of Armageddon, but you have to, the Mosai has to put his spirit on you for you to put these scriptures together. 
It's like a puzzle. You got to take the pieces of a puzzle and you put the pieces together and then you see the big picture. And the most side has opened up our eyes to see that big picture. All praises to you, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. It says here, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Assyria. Now we know there was an ancient Babylon and there's a new Babylon, also known as uh, Babylon the Great or the Daughter of Babylon. <clears throat> it says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Now there's a lot in the news on uh, Syria. It says, Gird up yourself with cloth of sack and hair. Be well your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. And that's what we've been trying to tell you people or been telling you people for years on the highways and the byways that ultimately this place will be destroyed. And don't get mad at us. Get mad If you're going to get mad at somebody, get mad at the Most High, the Supreme Yahweh. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says a sword is sent upon you and who may turn it back? Now this sword represents uh, your modern day sword which is uh, the ICBM because these ICBM missiles will destroy this place. You know, keep your eyes on the Middle East. Keep your eyes on Syria. Watch the news. You know, you can watch a, a CNN for breaking news, and you can uh, go to your, you can you can go to RT. You can go to uh, any of these. Uh, any of these uh, news uh, outlets, whether they be online, and you, you, watch, you, you watch, watch the news, and you filter it through the scriptures. They're reading on. Okay, the third verse. The sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you. And these plagues are the missiles. You know, if you read Psalms 91, and Psalms 91 basically goes into when these missiles are shot on Babylon the Great that the elect will be beamed up into these ships by the uh, angels and, and, and Yahweh Shah will be in the midst of uh, those ships and uh, we we will then look down and that's part of the prophecy you know you're gonna look down and you're gonna see the, the destruction and the re reward of the wicked which are these evil ass Edomites okay it says uh, fifth verse plagues are sent uh, unto you and what is and what is he that may drive them away there's nothing that you can do. If you can you can also go into Nahum. There's so many scriptures that pop into my my head. Nahum, the third chapter. It says the sixth verse: May any man drive away a hungry lion in the in the wood, or may any one quench the fire in stubble when it has begun, begun to burn. May one turn again the arrow, which are the missiles, that is shot of a strong archer. And that strong archer is are these uh, uh, missile silos. 
in Job the twentieth chapter it it goes into um how they come from the body. It says the eighth verse, the mighty Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai sendeth the plagues. What plagues in particular? The missiles. And who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath, anger, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten, beaten to power, to powder, excuse me, at his presence. And it tells you in the book of Ezekiel, it tells you that he will be in the presence of these missiles. It tells you in the book of Hebrew, the Hebrews, that um the Lord is a consuming fire. So we're living in serious times. We're living at the end of this thing. It said the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea arise, arises up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled and the fishes thereof also before Yahweh by Hashem Shai and before the glory of his power for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow the bow would be the uh, or the bow represents the, uh, the silos which are in the earth his arrows, the missiles, that are sh that that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the earth. Now, the Yahweh Shai told the the, uh, the uh, apostles that they would prophesy in Jerusalem, Judea, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. The uttermost part of the earth, the other side of the earth, was uh, right over here. So the missiles are going to be shot over here. It says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. So they go out into the outer atmosphere and they go from one continent to another. That's why. They, you have that term, ICBM. It's, that's an acronym for Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. Fifteen, the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. And that's why when you go back to uh, Isaiah the 13th chapter, it speaks about the destruction of the whole land, meaning the whole land of Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon. 16. Like as an arrow, which are the missiles, ICBM missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, Satan, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues the missiles that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. 17. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? So that's Ezra, the priest, high priest, and prophet. You know, he, he saw these things happening, happening in um, 
he wrote them down, he scribed them down, and he was afraid. He was like, am I going to be saved out of this? And yes, he is going to be saved out of this, because he's a man of the Lord. 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. Now, you can go a chapter back to uh, Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, and it goes into the horrific famine that will hit this place. And it's already, you know, people in Venezuela are already experiencing uh, Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. And, um, you know, if you watch the news, they block that from the news. You know, Esau, he's known in his media to censor things. Uh, 18 verse again, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars. Because they, you, what, you, what you're involved in, what you see now in the news is wars and proxy wars. Proxy wars meaning you have two nations fighting, two sovereigns fighting, and another sovereign gets in involved in that. And that, and that turns into a, another war, which is a proxy war, a next war. And the powers shall stand in fear, meaning the government, the ruling body, bodies of the earth, they're going to stand in fear. It says the beginning of evils. And the word evil means um, ill time or bad time. What shall I do when these evils shall come? So the word evil is different from the word wicked. It says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of their Scourges. Behold, victuals shall be good cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case, and even then shall evils grow upon earth. And we're experiencing that right now as I read this. Sword, famine, and great confusion. Because when these things start to escalate, you know, you have these various different schools of thought. You have the various religions, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Roman Catholics. You have the black consciousness community. You have the Moors. You have the, you have Islam. And when these things begin to take place, they're going to be looking for answers. And, and we here at Great Millstone, we have all the answers. So this is not going to be a shock to us. And by the way, everybody wants to down the Bible like it was written by the white man and the Bible's been tampered with and, you know, this, that, and the third. Well, they didn't tamper with the mark of the beast part. And they didn't tamper with the Armageddon part. So when that mark of the... And by the way, the Bible is the only book that prophesied going back 2,000 years ago that the whole world will receive a mark. Anyway, let me read this last scripture, maybe this, maybe the last two scriptures, and I'm going to close it on that. It says, For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. Go back, go, go a chapter back to uh, 2nd Ezra 15 chapter, and read that whole chapter. And cannibalism is going to make a big comeback, by the way. You people that have your mountaintop retreats, you're going to wind up eating eating your babies. If your wife drops dead, you're going to wind up eating her. And they showed you that a good movie to see is uh, The Road with uh, Viggo Mortensen. And um, they, they really go into it. And that's that's a deeper movie than um, the movie that Denzel did when he was... Uh, that futuristic movie, I forget the name of that the name of that movie. But you'll see it on the screen. Anyway, it says twenty two. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other 
that escape the hunger shall the sword des destroy. So one way or another, you're going to be put to death. 23. And the dead shall be cast out as dung. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. There shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit and who shall gather them. Anyway, with that, I'm going to uh, close it. and You can read the rest of this chapter. And, you know, all the things that we here at Great Millstone teach, they're all going to come to pass. Everything that we have said. And then you shall know there has been a prophet or prophets among you. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.